Hey folks, today I'm going to do a quick demonstration and review of a chipper shredder that I recently bought. Now, if you're one of my regular subscribers and you're used to seeing content on RVs, don't worry, I'm not changing the content of the channel, but every once in a while I'll come across something that maybe I couldn't find a lot of information on before I bought it. And so if it's something that I would recommend and would be helpful to others, I'll do a quick demonstration and review as in the case of this chipper shredder. So if you're one of my regular subscribers and you're just into the RV stuff, don't worry, I'm not changing the content of the channel. You can just skip this video if it's not of interest to you. But I wanted to put it out there because I couldn't find a lot of information on this particular product before I bought it. So this is the Victory MDW C1500 chipper shredder and this one's a disc style chipper shredder which seems to be less popular a lot of ones in this price point that I was looking at the alternatives were drum style chipper shredder so definitely research the difference between the two so you understand what you're getting into but this one is a disc style chipper shredder the manufacturer advertises that it'll go up to about four and a half inches I believe is the number on the thickness and I'll show you what it actually does here in just a little bit but the reason I bought this is you know if you've got property with a lot of trees then you know that they're constantly dropping limbs you know sometimes the trees are dying you got to take them out and clean things up a little bit and so every time you call a tree company in to do that kind of work for you, it's going to be a minimum $2,000 bill, if not three or four thousand. Doesn't matter even if it's just a, a small you know batch of trees. And so this really is going to be a, a money saver. Plus I can do a lot more frequent maintenance without having to call a, a tree company out. And really I think this will do probably 80% of the chipping and shredding that I need on my property. And you can see I've been chipping uh, or cutting trees and trimming for the last couple weeks here and just making piles so you can see what i'm going to be working on today but just for the sake of the video i went ahead and sorted over here some different piles so we've got some hardwood that are thicker over here that are pretty fresh pretty green and then moving back here i've got some pine some softer wood and i'll pull out a tape measure as i chip these up so you can kind of see how how thick they are uh, but then I even got some really big stuff that's dead and dried, you know, and the manufacturer again says I think four and a half inches is the biggest that this will chip, but I found it's not so much the diameter of what you're chipping and shredding, but maybe how hard it is, how soft it is. So some of this bigger stuff down here, it's, it's all rotted, you know, it's, it's soft, so it's going to be pretty easy for it to chip, even though it's bigger than that four and a half inches. So we'll kind of see with all the different stuff that I've laid out here and then of course i've got some limbs stuff like this that can do all day long but i figured i'd show a, a little bit of that going through so let me give you a quick walk around of the unit itself so you can kind of see some of its features so again this is the mdwc 1500 disc style chipper shredder you can see it's got a nice hopper on this side to feed everything into and it's got these rubber kind of safety things here to keep stuff from flying out but you can actually see what it looks like with the cutting knives that are inside there. You can see the tip of that one in there and it basically just rotates around uh, like a disc and that's where it gets its name from of course. But it's got the emergency shut off right here so if you know something's stuck in there you can immediately push down on here and that'll cut the engine off. And it's kind of when they ship it to you, I'll throw up some pictures of what this looks like, but they ship it freight to you and so you do have to assemble it a little bit. The assembly I was kind of dreading initially but I will say it wasn't that bad. It took about maybe two hours. And really, the whole base unit here that you're seeing on this black kind of base, the actual disc and the flywheel and the pulley and the engine, all that is already mounted onto that base. So really, the only things you're assembling are the tongue here, the tongue stand, the tires, of course, putting those on, the little wheel uh, well covers there, and then, of course, you're putting on the the hopper as well and the, the chute there going out. So it probably took about two hours. And one thing I'll say that I really appreciated that they did is they, you know, a lot of times when you have something to put together, you get a bag of bolts and screws, right? Where you gotta match everything up. But what the manufacturer did is they actually put all the bolts and screws where they actually belong with the nuts and everything on. So all you had to do was, you know, they're just hand tightened, just un unthread them. And then you knew right away that's where, for instance, these bolts and nuts are used because they were already here to begin with, just kind of hand tightened. So I really did appreciate that. Uh, the manual, the instructions was pretty easy to follow along. And like I said, only about two hours. So really was surprised. But uh, like I said, I'll throw some pictures up of what it looked like in the crate that it came assembled with. The only thing I would say uh, that you just gotta be prepared for is this thing weighs a little bit over 500 pounds. 
And so you got to be prepared. You know, they'll deliver it uh, with a lift gate if you need to. Um, I just had them put it in the back of my truck. But then you got to think about how are you going to lift this heavy thing out of your truck or, or assemble it, right? So I am fortunate enough, for those who watch my RV videos, I've got a hoist that I use to put my fifth wheel hitch in and out of the truck bed. So I use that same hoist to basically lift this up and it made it a whole lot easier to get the wheels and the tires on and all that good stuff. So that's probably the one thing you just want to be prepared for if you don't have a, a second set of hands, some kind of hoist or something to to lift everything up there. But back to the walk around on the in-feed chute, they give you this little tube up here to keep the owner's manual in there so it's with you all the time. And one thing I really like about this in-feed chute is it's hinged. So if I ever needed to get access to the knives, you know, if it jammed and I need to get access, it just has two bolts on this side that you gotta remove. And then you can see here it's got hinges and so the whole chute kind of just rotates out. So I really like that a lot. And it's actually the same deal on the knives that are in here in this disc portion here. So you can see it's got a hinge down here and then it's just got these two bolts up on top. So if you take these two bolts off, then this whole top portion here will open up so you can get access into the, the knives there where the disc is spinning. So I like that a lot, makes it easy to do maintenance. And then back here is gonna be where your, your uh, pulley is on the belt there. And of course you've got your engine. Now mine came with a, a Briggs & Stratton the XR Professional. So this is a 420 cc, 13 and a half gross horsepower. Uh, and that's another thing I'll just comment when you're looking at these different chipper shredders and they say, you know, it'll do four inches, five inches, six inches. I would almost pay more attention to what kind of engine that they're putting on. I mean, if you're looking at one and they're putting a nine horsepower engine and saying it'll do five inch limbs, I don't know, I'd be a little skeptical. So. You just want to pay more attention, I think, to the power of the engine, that it's matched appropriately to what the manufacturer is claiming. So again, this one is a Briggs & Stratton. You know, uh, it's American made. You know, maybe they're not the top of the line engine, but this one seems to be uh, one of their higher grade engines, at least. I'm not as familiar with the Briggs & Stratton lineup, but it is the XR Professional. The only thing that I, I wish the engine had that I added afterward was this hour meter because that way for maintenance, you know, changing the oil and whatnot, it makes it a little bit easier. So that'd be the one thing that I wish Briggs would add on there. But again, it's, you know, 15, 20 bucks to add one of those on for yourself. This one does have a keyed ignition and electric start there. So the manufacturer actually puts a, a battery over here. They've got a spot on the backside where they tuck in. I believe it's a, a lithium battery, if I'm not mistaken, that they put in there. So that's pretty nice. Makes it a little bit easier being a larger engine there. Uh, speaking of which, a 420 cc engine. I had, used to have a, uh, a Honda Rancher four wheeler, and that was the exact same output, a 420 cc engine. So I mean, it's a pretty, pretty decent size engine for an application like this. It's got a nice big fuel tank on the top there, and of course, if the battery is dead, it's got the manual recoil start there. And then of course you've got all your, your choke and your throttle down here and you can also turn the, the fuel off there. The exhaust is gonna be on this side over here and you got easy access to your spark plug as well right there and then of course your air filter on top. Now one thing I really like about the discharge chute is that it's adjustable so you can loosen up these on top here. You can tilt this up or down depending on how high you want it to shoot out. And from my research, it seems like the disc style chipper shredders have a little bit more thrust and momentum as far as shooting the chips out of the chute there from what I read at least. And, and based on my use so far, I would agree with that. It seems to really shoot them pretty far. Haven't had any issues whatsoever with anything getting clogged up there in that neck there. But what I really like about this discharge chute is you can rotate it here. So a lot of the ones I looked at you know, kind of had a fixed discharge chute that would only eject one side of the unit. But here, I mean, I can turn this wherever I want to discharge. And to me, that was a big deal because if you're towing it on something here, like I've got my UTV hooked up, if you're towing it, you may not want it to discharge forward at your UTV. And a lot of them, you know, just discharge the opposite direction that the end feed chute is. So that's one thing I really like about this. You can turn it whichever direction you want and you just kind of lift up on this little handle here and then twist it around. So definitely a nice feature to have for sure. 
And speaking of towing, another feature that I really like is that it comes with this tongue and it's already mounted with a two inch ball mount. And so I really like that a lot. You know, a lot of them just had a kind of a basic uh, pintle, kind of a tractor style mount. And this is just a lot more secure, especially if you're towing it in uneven terrain. So I appreciate that they have this on there. In fact, I think it's actually rated, if I remember right, by the DOT for towing up to, you know, I can't remember if it was 45 miles per hour or something on the street. So it is technically street legal, I guess, but for me, I'd feel more comfortable just using it here on the property. And then it also has this stand built into the tongue. So if you're not hooked up towing and you wanna let it rest and stand by itself, it's got a nice sturdy base that'll rotate out there with a little pin. And speaking of being sturdy, one thing that I do like about the overall track, the width of this base that it's on, it's almost three feet across from wheel to wheel, kind of the outside of those wheels. And then really your center of gravity is pretty low because you've got the engine right there and then the disc and everything, that's very heavy, all that right there. So on my property, I've got a lot of hills. And one thing that's really nice about this is I can go remote pretty much anywhere with it. And even on some of the steep inclines and grades where it you know, looks like it maybe wants to tilt and tip over, but because it's got such a nice wide base and a low center of gravity, you know, it's no issue. So I really like that a lot. I can take this right to where I'm working. You know, I'm not spending a lot of time dragging limbs to a certain location. I can just come to it here with the chipper shredder. All right, so enough yapping. How about I start it up and go through my demo pile? So it's been a couple weeks since I last used it, so this will be a good demonstration of a cold start. But you can see we've got a choke lever down here, so we're gonna put that on choke. And then I usually put the throttle about three-fourths of the way up there. And of course, the fuel line is turned on there. And it's just got the start over here on this side. Just kind of a dummy, kind of a blank key that goes in there. Kind of ease the throttle there, and the choke. Let it warm up real good.
Well, hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can send through this particular unit. As you probably saw, it's not so much the diameter of the individual limbs and trunks, but more how hard and how soft the wood is. So the softer pine that you saw, even the ones that were bigger, you know, it still took those on pretty good compared to the harder wood. Those limbs were only maybe two or three inches across. And you know, in my opinion, what I was hearing and observing here, those seem to be just as difficult as those thicker pine. And of course, the ones that were all rotted, that were you know five and six inches across that I threw in there, I mean, those are been sitting on the forest floor for who knows how many years. And so those were a lot easier for the machine to handle there. And I'll just give you an idea of how far it shot the chips out of the chute here. So that starts a couple feet off the base down here, and then we'll just walk it out. I think this is probably about oh 20 feet or so at the end here so it just kind of shot them out of that chute all the way across here and you can see it's a pretty finely ground blend here i mean that's pretty finely ground considering how big some of those limbs and trunks were that i threw in there and i'm not an expert but i think that's one of the big differences between the the uh, disc style chippers and the drum style i think and i could be wrong but i think the disc style are going to ground everything up a little bit finer compared to the the drum style i think the drum are a little bit more coarse there but i'm very pleased with how it shoots so far very pleased with the output the machine actually does here you can see it's real nice good for erosion control all right just a couple other things to mention real quick you probably noticed while i was using it that it has a tendency to want to kick back the limbs that you're feeding into the chute here and so you know, you really just gotta be in the zone, in the game 100% of the time when you're using something like this. It could really turn out to be a dangerous piece of equipment if you're not aware of your surroundings. In fact, I try to stand off to the side here when I'm using it so that if something does kick back and I'm not expecting it, it doesn't take me by surprise, you know, being out of the line of fire there. So just use common sense. Definitely wanna get a forestry helmet like I've got here. It's got the ear protectors on both sides. And then I really like this mesh protector in the front. They give you also a plexiglass piece, but I like this mesh because it's a little more breathable, especially when it gets hot out. But uh, you know, you saw I put on safety goggles first and then the, the mesh protector there, and it gets really loud, so that's why, you, of course, you want the ear protectors. Of course, you want to wear gloves too. And then I also recommend getting a pair of chaps for your pants, you can see here. You know, a lot of times when I'm using the chipper shredder, I'm also using the chainsaw, trimming limbs up and stuff to make sure they fit in the, the chute properly. And so if you're using stuff like this, you know, I found it's just a matter of, you know, when there's gonna be an accident, not if there will. So it's good just to have all that safety gear in place. In fact, I will include links in the description below for Amazon if you're interested in buying the same hat and chaps and gloves and all that stuff. In fact, you can actually buy this entire chipper shredder on Amazon. That was another reason why I chose this one because if you have you know, Amazon gift cards or rewards through Amazon, you can use it to actually buy something like this. So I'll put a link to that as well. The manufacturer also sells it on their website direct, I think for a little bit less, depending on whether you need a, a lift gate for delivery. But uh, it's kind of a nice pro that you can buy it on Amazon. Now, one thing I'll just point out is I'm not affiliated with the manufacturer. They're not paying me to do this video. Uh, again, this is just something that I had a hard time finding a demonstration on this particular unit before I bought it. And so I thought it'd be helpful to put this out there. So it's just my candid feedback. You know, it seems like a pretty decent unit so far. You know, I can't say how it's going to hold up or how long the knives are going to last. Uh, I will say when I reached out to the the rep at the manufacturer that kind of distributes these, I think they're based out of California or somewhere on the West Coast. But I will say I got replies back pretty quick with questions I had before the sale and after. So that's always a plus. But from what I was told by the uh, the rep, the knives might last depending on how you use it maybe you know once a season for the average homeowner so i think they run about 50 bucks or so for a pair and you can get those direct from the manufacturer all right folks i got a lot of chipping and shredding left to do so i'm going to get back to work but i hope this video was helpful if you liked it be sure to give me a thumbs up and support the channel using the affiliate links in the description below and if you like videos on rvs and trucks and stuff like that then definitely click that subscribe button as always thanks for watching